Hi, and welcome to this section of the Differential Equation Tutor. And uh, this section we're going to learn how to solve uh, elementary second order and higher order differential equations. We're also going to be introduced to the concept of what a linear differential equation is and a non-homogeneous and homogeneous version. Now we've talked about these concepts in volume one of the differential equations tutor, so really these are more extension concepts. They're not uh, new or thrown out there out of the blue. They're really things that you've been exposed to, but what I want to do is lay it out in a concrete way because as we get into the more complicated equations the terminology is going to be even more important than it was in volume one of the differential equations uh, DVD that we had. So the first thing we want to do before we get into solving anything is talk about what is a linear differential equation. What is a linear ordinary differential equation? Because when you see that written in a book it's important for you to know what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and write that down. It's a pretty simple definition once it's explained to you. If you just read it in a book uh, it can be difficult. So we say an nth order, uh, nth order, ordinary differential equation, ODE, is linear um, if we can write it as the following. Now this does, this does not mean that we have to read it out of your book in this form. This just means if we can manipulate it, move things left and, and right and so on and, and beat it into the following, uh, into the following uh, uh, way. So if we can write it in this form we say it's linear. So let me write it down and we'll talk about it. a sub n of t d uh, nth derivative of x with respect to t, plus dot, 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 we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, a sub 1 of t times dx dt, plus a sub 0, or a naught, however you want to say it, of t times x is equal to e of t. Okay, if you can write a differential equation in this form, which has a lot of dots, the reason we have the dots in here is because you might have three derivatives, a third order derivative, or a fourth order derivative, or a fifth derivative, or a second derivative. Depends on how complicated your equation is. So we kind of have the dots in there to tell you we can make it uh, fit the problem. So what we basically have is, you know, you have a lot of things written down in front of you. So let's just break it apart real quickly. Here we have the derivatives. This could be fourth derivative. And then the next guy below it would be third derivative, and then second derivative. And here we've written the first derivative out. After the first derivative comes no derivative. It's just x of t. So you just go down in derivative. So, you know, fifth, fourth, third, second, first, and then no derivative. This is just the regular variable. Okay? That's what the derivatives are. Don't let the n scare you. This is just a placeholder. I don't know how complicated my equation is going to be. We're going to say it's nth order. Could be seventh order. Could be tenth order. Whatever. All right. Now we have a constant. I call it a constant, but really it's it's a function of of, a, of our uh, independent variable time out sitting out in front of every single term. So the sub n here. Don't get so confused by that. That that follows the same the same numbering that we have here. If it's fifth order or fifth derivative here, then we say this is a sub five a sub 4, a sub 3, a sub 2, here's a sub 1 because this is the first derivative. So these are just subscripts to keep track of the fact that they're different constants. Uh, and I keep saying constants because later on in the course these are going to be reduced to constants to make uh, some solutions easier to deal with. But right now this is the general thing. In general they can be a function of time. If